that's not that old actually I got it like a year ago I think it's uh you know I don't know what it is all right we're live all right sweet <clears throat> okay so last time if you watched basically what we're, we're going through here is we kind of talked about the limitations well the great thing about body weight exercise is the easy uh, or ease of access but we also talked about some limitations just being like long-term progress and we're kind of going through here going over different body weight exercises and different ways to keep the progress going when you don't have equipment now speaking of equipment this is a nice plug for i'll let you take care yeah. of this here logan i just like we, we read it now so if you guys are interested it's actually a pretty easy and painless process go in your fit club app on the right hand side i believe it's the third tab down um is our store click on the store and there we have kettlebells dumbbells um, barbells and the like to rent so the price is there you just pick what you want put in the cart ships it right to us we get everything ready for you we deliver it to your car um, and then we just you know take money out of your account so it's pretty simple and again pretty painless is there anything that we have like a shortage on right now no i mean we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen right, we'll make it happen yeah. if there if that does come up we can always have the people who just have gotten super strong now yeah. with like 15 20 pound dumbbells return them and then upgrade to 35 yeah, to and and then sure it works. yeah yeah, yeah 30, 30 days yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, make that work. All right, so last time we talked about squats, we talked about all those different variations, or, or at least a number of the variations we do. So from there, what we can do for another lower body exercise, so if we have squats, then you can do quasi single leg versions of it, or at least what's considered a single leg version. We'll go into why it's technically not really, but split squats. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the next obvious one. So with that, we'll just go over the kind of the basic form here really quick as far as that goes. Now, I recommend that, well, split squats also known as a static lunge. So if lunge is more in your terminology and what you think of in that, then basically it's like a lunge where you're not moving per se, you're just going up and down. So sometimes it's called static lunge. Now, I'll say this right off the bat, there is a bit of a balance component to this, and if you're not used to doing them, it's not a bad idea to have like a countertop or a chair or something to hold on to. Um, just, just to take care of that first. So as far as form goes on here, I mean, it varies from person to person, but in general, I like to have people go, you yeah, want to demo? Sure. All right, here we go. So, so Logan, we'll start with this stance that's about hip width apart to start off with. And he's already gotten his split squat stance because hey, he knows what he's doing. So, so if we go, yeah, split squat, or the uh, uh, hip width apart stance, then kind of drag one leg back. Now this is where, you know, holding onto something is, uh, is advantageous, especially if you've done it before. I'd go ahead and have you actually take a little bit of a longer stride on there. Now, the split squat, you're going to pretend as though you're just sinking straight down, kind of like what you did with the squats. Now, the difference is on the squats, because both feet are planted, you know, parallel to each other, there is a forward back angle that has to happen whenever we're doing these. With split squats, not so much the case. So, Logan's going to get a big breath in, brace the abs and then sink right down. And if you notice that the forward leg, so his left leg in this case, is the low leg's gonna be perpendicular roughly to the floor. So there's that, and both knees are bending, so like he's sinking right down. Now, if you do have knee issues, then what you really do wanna pay attention to is that the knee's not driving too far forward. If you have too short of a stride like that. Now, if your knees are fine and healthy, then you're, you'll be perfectly fine with that. But regardless, it's a decent idea to have that forward uh, uh, leg perpendicular to the floor at the bottom. And in this case, if you want to even get a little stretch, you can go back a little bit more with that right foot, get a big breath in. And then now as he ascends, he's going to squeeze the glutes and hamstrings of the right leg in this case. So this is how it's considered a single leg exercise because of that split stance but it's just kind of working each leg a little differently. So the forward leg is gonna feel it a bit more in through the front part of the thigh, the quads. The rear leg, you're gonna feel pretty decent, especially if you're not terribly flexible in through hip flexors, you're gonna feel a good stretch as that rear leg goes down, and then working a lot through the glutes and hamstrings as, as coming up. So from that, if we remember from the squats, the standard squats, if that's the basic form, then what you can do to make that more challenging. So we do the tempo and we can do the pause and you can do the combination of the two on these as well. So again, we can take, take that stretch reflex out. So let's say that we take a two second pause at the bottom, big breath in, <laughs> one, two, and then drive it up and go to, yeah, go to the exhale at the top. Like I said, really constrain and squeezing the glutes and the hamstrings of that back leg as, as they come up. So again, <laughs> 
one, two, and then drag up. Now these can be, a little. you can certainly do tempo on these two. It can be a little bit more challenging just because of that split stance, but it can certainly be done. Um, maybe like three to four seconds on the way down, then you can even pause at the bottom and then come back up. So there's your, supposed to, and then of course, if you have access to, if you've been renting our, our equipment or uh, Logan's makeshift uh, <laughs> ways, with the hey, get like creative, the get creative. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Dynamic so, stabilization, baby. <laughs> right, right. So, and then you can adjust the the amount of weight as depending yeah. on what yeah. you fill it up. Your shoulder too. So, you can go to the side. so yeah, you can you can do that to make those more challenging as well. Okay, so now, so we have split squats, and I already kind of alluded to this a little bit, but we'll even even back up from there. Another way that you can make those more challenging is to do a rear leg elevated split squat or the uh, infinitely cooler name, Bulgarian uh, split squat. Anytime you have like a country yeah. like yeah. attached to an extra, it's just, it's just cooler. cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like one time for fun, I put like, like what, how many countries can I fit in like one workout? One workout. And they're almost all Eastern European. Yeah, all it's well, like, the time. It's like there's, the the Cuban, there's like the Cuban press, which I don't know what makes it Cuban, but anyway, I don't really know what makes the other ones tough well, countries either. Yeah. So, so, yeah, anyway, that's bunch just of, a bunch of herders. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, with the uh, rear leg of the Bulgarian split squat, you'll need a step or something. Now, it doesn't have to be step up like this, it can be. You know, if you have a step at home, I will stool. say, yep, stool. I will say though that for a taller, so Logan's taller than I am, he would be. It's easier for him to do a higher step up than say a shorter lifter. So, if you are not like the tallest person on the planet, you probably don't need as high of a box as you might think. Um, so, some, some even something like that chair might be a little bit on the high side. But if that's what you have access to, that's what you have access to. So what does this version do that's different than the standard split squat? So, well first the setup, which I have to admit can be one of the more challenging things with this one. So we've already beat up Logan here a little bit. I can at least take some break here. So, yeah, so like, Are those so if it, they're not, no, they're they're not. normal khakis. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So when doing the Bulgarian split squat, I do have to say I would highly recommend that you do standard split squats first. This will allow you to get you know, a rough idea of what your stride length should be, just because you have a lot of practice with that. Now, two ways that you can do this. If you're feeling jumpy, you can start fairly close to the step, put your foot up on the step, and then kind of hop out. And again, if you've been doing split squats for a little while, you have a rough idea of what your, your stride should be. And then from here, the form is essentially the same. Get the uh, tall chest, big breath in, brace the abs, and then you're gonna come down to where ideally this, the, the thigh is parallel to the floor, and then again, squeeze the glutes and hamstrings of the back leg. Now, what you'll notice here on doing these, why these are more challenging, not only just from the step up uh, position or getting into the position, but as you descend, particularly that back leg is getting an increased stretch in through the hip flexors and through the quads, and specifically if we wanna geek out here a little bit, it's the rectus femoris since it crosses both the hip and the knee, knee joint. So it's not terribly uncommon to be like, whoa, feel big time stretching through here, and then again, squeezing the glutes and hamstrings coming up. Sometimes, and this would go with standard split squats too, to watch for, is that you actually don't want to over arch in through the lower back. So just have it here, your natural low back arch coming down, but it doesn't have to be so much like that. So actually a slight forward lean from that would be, would be best. Again, you can take use of pauses, tempo, all that other fun stuff. I've seen people do, we haven't talked about jumping yet, I've seen people do jumping on this, I wouldn't terribly recommend doing, doing that. Yeah, at least not with your foot elevated. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do that. Usually it's the forward leg that jumps, but I wouldn't personally recommend doing that. Uh, as far as the other way of getting into the position is, this is actually the way that I like better, is to actually have yourself stepped out a little bit further. It's just an easier transition. You're not having to try to hop forward or anything like that when you're getting into position. So again, tempo stuff, pause reps. I think over the years, and maybe you have a similar experience here, Logan, I think I can count on one hand like how many people actually like, like Bulgarian split squats. They're a great exercise as far as effectiveness goes, but 
because that stretch is like really almost like eye opening. <laughs> it's intense, but, but yeah. a lot of people have tight hips too, and they can utilize this as kind of a double yeah. whammy, right? It's an yeah, extra exercise as well yeah. as a little bit of a stretch, just making sure that you're not stretching too deep. Yeah, right? yeah. Again, start with the split squats first, and then go to Elevate. the Bulgarian split squats, just because. If you want, if, if tightness is an issue again, I mean you're going to get a pretty decent stretch even from doing that standard split squat position as you're as you're doing that. So um, now if there's a rear leg elevated, there's a, for, a forward or front foot elevated. This one did not get a cool Eastern European uh, name attached to it. I don't know why it didn't. Um, with the front foot elevated split squats are are kind of interesting. They actually tend to make it a little bit easier to get to depth even compared to a standard split squat, because again, the forward leg is elevated here. So now it's already you know, fairly bent. So it's easier in this case to get to parallel. Now, you can use that as sometimes stepping so now, and admittedly, that's kind of a high step up to use for front foot elevated split squats. But that being said, if you do get good, good with them and, or get a lot of practice with them, and your flexibility is decent enough to do, you'll notice that I can sink down pretty low too at the same time, and so get a greater stretch in through the body. Why does a lucky woman like that? Is a really do good not, stretch. yeah, do not put that on my <laughs> It already is. Uh oh. So, um, now I lost my train of thought. Sorry. All right, that's okay. So, anyway, so there's, there's some split squat variations. Again, we can take use of the, or make use of the tempo and then the pause. So that's the split squat. So what can we do next with that to make it more, I guess to say dynamic in part of movement, I mean you are moving technically going up and down, is that you can do reverse lunges or forward lunges. Now which you do first or how you incorporate that is kind of personal preference. Um, here's what I personally do is that, and this is an arbitrary number, when I have people be able to do 10 split squats hands free, uh, then I'll start rolling in the lunge variations. Again, that's an arbitrary number that I've made up. I don't know if, if you have some, no, something they go you know, to, but. Good stability, um, good strength. As far as the lunge variations go, the one that I like to start off with first is the reverse lunge. And the purpose of this, or the reason why, is that, again, I work with a lot of beginners. So when people, they're starting that same stance, so feet are, let me get a little bit better in the shot here, feet hip width apart, and then, what they do is you take the big step back as if you were about to do that split squat, drop down, and then from here you're going to use the back leg to help propel forward. So the reverse lunge compared to the forward lunge is a little bit more of a hip dominant sort of movement, even though you are getting that knee flexion in the front and in, in that forward leg. But the reason why I start off with the reverse lunge is that you can visually see where that forward leg is in, and the knee in relation to the toe, which is something I should have mentioned, is that the knee, just like the squats, is always gonna go in line with the toe. You're not gonna cave, usually caving in is typically the, the, the more dangerous of the two versions, but knees going right in line with the toes. Now, again, I can just look at my foot the entire time, take that big step back, and then keep that perpendicular uh, uh, form, I guess you could say, with that forward leg. Forward lunges for some can sometimes be a little tougher because they don't know exactly like how far along the stride to take. Again, this is just me. This isn't, I'm not saying that you can't do forward lunges before you do reverse lunges. You certainly can. It's just, it's, it's more of a personal training preference yeah. than anything. Well, and I find that some of this has a little bit more of a stability issue in the knee, even yeah. though there's flexion extension of that knee, the knee's right. more stable because that foot's not moving right. Yeah, it's, pl right. it's already planted so, as opposed to as opposed to going down. So, and again, the reverse lunges do the same same sort of thing. Now, the, the tempo part can be a little bit more challenging because the, the, the ideal difference here is that you're trying to come up, it doesn't have to be super fast, but decent enough speed. And then you can kind of pause and stick the landing before coming forward again. So, so yeah, there's there's a reverse lunge again. Uh, get Logan's makeshift weights, uh, and, that's, and, and that will work out beautifully. The forward lunge then, uh, again, once you get the practice with the split squats and reverse lunges, you probably are now getting that proprioception or that body awareness to know like, okay, this is about the stride length that I need to take to get into that right position. So the difference in the forward lunge that I already talked about is that now the forward leg is doing more of a kicking off motion so that you, you may feel it more in through the quads rather than through the hips. And I'm kind of getting into bodybuilding territory here, but how much of that difference you'll feel may be minuscule or you may feel a lot. It just 
kind of depends on the person. I think too how long your stride is will right. we'll determine a lot of where you're going Which, a little bit more. I'm glad you brought that up. So talking about stride uh, length here, and again talking about how this is more uh, something to pay attention to when you're forward lunging, is that too short of a stride will typically lead to the, well let me step back here a little bit, step out a little bit more. If you take too short of a stride, that will typically lead to the weight shifting forward onto the toes and then having that knee slide in the bottom position. Taking a stride that's too long typically will lead to like a partial rep. So, I mean, I would err almost on the side of a longer stride because a partial is less, uh, or I guess it's more forgiving, I guess you could say, as opposed to a more narrow stride. But do you ever play around with your clients who do who have the ability to kind of play around with distance? You know, if I have a little bit of a shorter stride, I can still keep that knee stability mm -hmm. versus the longer stride. Or you just oh yeah, that's comfortable? that's a great question. Yeah, for me, I really just find what's most comfortable for them. You know, whatever is easiest for them to continue to hit that that sort of position. Again, if you look into the bodybuilding world, they'll have like specific programming where they'll specifically program shorter strides versus longer strides. Um, Again, in general, if your goals are, you know, work, increase work capacity, increase strength, I, uh, and I'm flaming on the internet right now, but I don't really think that that matters too much. I mean, maybe, like I said, in the bodybuilding circles, it matters more what your stride length is outside of just like what feels best for the individual. So, yeah, good question there. Do you have a preference? Uh, I like a little bit longer. I yeah. find it a little bit more comfortable. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll lunge. I mean, you, you can lunge around. You can lunge for time, right? Yeah. You can lunge for reps. Mm -hmm. You can lunge for distance. Yeah. And, and sometimes I do it for distance. And I think I want to try. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I've done, I've done a little bit quicker. It's more, yeah, that's, that's, just, that's just more efficient. Yeah. That's yeah. just what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's a great point, too, is that if you do have to have the space, like we have this nice, you know, AP room here, so we got a pretty decent amount of space, you can do these walking, whether it be forward or So when you do that, if you're doing it stationary, it's not a bad idea or a, a bad sort of way to train. It's where you're doing all on one side before switching to the other side. Now the purpose of that is, is that you're getting more of a buildup or fatigue and a potential training effect from doing all on one side versus the other. But when you're walking, well, I mean, you're alternating sides. And you can alternate sides too, even just in a standard, uh, just in the same uh, standing position as opposed to you know, actually walking. With the actual walking part of it, you get the benefit of having to decelerate and accelerate the movement too. So that's just, again, a different kind of training effect that's going on there with that. But yeah, take longer strides. If you're going for distance, <laughs> that's the way to go. I had a group lunch a mile once, I never do it again. It's oh, a horrible gosh. mistake as a beginning trainer probably about 15 years ago. Ooh, one mile? One mile. Man, yeah. on gym track. How'd you feel the next day? Pretty sure I'm going around now. Pretty sure that was a horrible yeah. mistake. Yeah, that's big is. individuals do. Not, I mean, I was proud of the achievement. No. Oh, oh, for sure, for sure. Yes, build, build up to that. Yeah, but that was the whole thing. It took, it took over an hour. Let's see, how many steps would that be? Yeah, I don't even know. Because what, 2,000 steps are average about a mile. Right. So let's say you're starting like three Ooh. steps. Right, so, right, right. I was so yeah yeah build, build, like build that. certainly build up to that. <laughs> um, all right, so then from there we talk about the tempo, we talk about the pause, and, and all, all the different lunging spot split spot variations. At least the sagittal ones. That we talk about lateral ones here in a second, but while well, keep on target here, is that uh, you can put uh, jumping lunges in effect. Now they're called jumping lunges, but technically they look a little bit more like jumping split squats. Uh, but hey, jumping lunge is the name we have, so we're gonna we're gonna stick with that. So when doing those, you actually get in that split squat position, and then from here you you dip down, and then you're gonna sh jump up as high as you can, and then alternate sides while you're going into it. I would recommend sticking the landing, and then go ahead and go into the the next one. Don't bounce your knee off. So the right, and that yeah, that goes for all lunging and split squat variations. But yeah, certainly not on the jumping ones. And again, I would make an argument that the jumping lunges would be something that you do after you've done the other variations, just because of that potential of the knee sliding down on you know, the floor. After in the sense of mastery, right? Right. Uh, not right. after in the sense of the workout itself. So yes, lunges, yeah, thank lunges, you. Lunges, yeah, yeah. And and after you do jumping right, lunges, right. If, get comfortable. Yeah, in the workout, if you're going to do that, you want to incorporate jumping or, or I, I would make the argument really most plyometric type of exercises 
probably prioritize those first and then go on into the other variations. Unless, of course, you're trying to do um, uh, post-activation potentiation, which I don't, we're not gonna talk about that now. That's, that's something specifically done to potentially train power. And right now we're talking about body weight exercises. The way that works is that you have a high intensity load and then you do the jumping movement. So a heavy deadlift followed by... Like broad jumps or, or yeah, yeah, so, or, or even uh, like deadlift yeah, box squat jumps, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, anyway, so slightly, it's <laughs> slightly off there, but yes, 100%, don't do all, <laughs> you know, tons of, don't lunge a mile and then like do a whole bunch of jumping, yeah. jumping lunges after that, so. Um, I mean, unless you're trying to like, just really destroy yourself, I guess. There's that. It was but, a good time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how are we doing on time? Okay. 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 All right, good. Like so, uh, one more thing that we could uh, go over here is that there are diagonal and side or lateral lunges that you do too. Now, with the lateral lunges, I don't know if I'll be able to pull these off. I might need your help. Yeah, yeah. This, the, I, I, I wore Guys. the wrong attire here. Yeah. But, but you can do, now I've seen them uh, build as uh, skater's lunges. I think that technically, if you go really deep with these, these become Cossack squats. Um, if I remember, yeah. so skaters would be. Yo, well, I skaters jump hard. Where, what I mean by that, so we had the split squat or the stag lunge. So on this, you take a side really side wide side stance, and then yeah, you're doing side to side. side. Yeah, so you see them build as. as shoes for the of squat. course, they have to have 97 names for the same exercise. They just confuse everyone. Yeah. So. I need warm up for Casa Swansea. I do, that's, that's all right, that's all right. So basically what you see from that, uh, well you don't have to do the Casa Swansea, but it's that wide stance. So again, okay, the Casa are a little bit different. So you're, you're coming up in between. Basically you're getting a little bit more of the hip AB ductors, so that's out here, the hip adductors are in through the inner thigh. So obviously the inner thigh of the stretched out leg as you're going down, well, here, let me get it right here. As you are going down like so, here's the adductor, the hip AB ductor for the um, knee that's bending. Now again, knee tracks in line with the toes and you'll notice that compared to split squats, lateral lunges or, or skaters lunges, whatever we want to call them, you'll notice my back angle has to change. Mm -hmm. And that's because again, I'm back to a parallel, you know, the stance being parallel. So the back angle is going to be more forward that to allow me, now I messed up that one. I don't know if you caught it. I didn't have a bad heel. The heel came off. So, so yeah, you keep your weight distributed roughly over the middle of the foot, and then notice that, there we go, that's a little bit better. Dude, we're over 30, we should warming up before this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I know we're going to have something. Notice that I really didn't go down to a full range of motion no. either. A full range of motion would be similar to the squat where you're getting five parallel to the floor. So, uh, those can be advantageous for A, technically you're working a little bit more muscle mass, uh, from the adductors and abductors, although they are still working on split squats too, it's just in a, in a slightly different way. As far as loading goes on those, I'm not a huge fan of doing dumbbell, of holding on to dumbbells when doing lateral lunges, just because you're, yeah, it's, it's just a weird transition. Um, I would, <laughs> I would, I would just rather you take advantage of the, the pause, uh, especially your hand on that. I find those are so. really good things to work at the end of the workout too, where you're already a little fatigued. Yeah, and yeah. You don't really right. Need extra weight, and that's yeah, yeah. That's a great point there. So when you are programming this and putting all these things together, is that you can take advantage of, of, of uh, things like that, where you can specifically do an exercise that you know you can do a lot of reps on, and purposely put it at the at the tail end so that you're limited more by the fatigue rather than like having to do. You know, you're like, why am I doing these? I can do like twenty, you know, side lunges, and I don't really feel much of it. Well, I'll do um, you know. Maybe you jump that, bring that down to say 15 after you've done squats and a bunch of other sets on stuff, and then yeah, you get a, a, still that training effect there. So, taking consideration last week, how would you place? Because obviously, I think squats a lot of times would be at the beginning of our, of our work. I would right? make that argument, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so lunges, where mm -hmm. do you see them? Because I mean, the, the benefit to lunges is unilateral strength, right? right. Because squats, a lot of times, if you give one side that's a little stronger than the other, it can aid. And assist, yeah. right? This is a little harder because you're working in one specific leg at a time. Yeah, so in different would, ways. In yeah. different ways, yeah. yeah. How would you how would you program? So that's yeah, and, and that you can actually base that um, uh, each each day of your week workout. So let's say that on Monday you start off with your one and a half squats as like your hard variation, 
and then after you, and may say you pair that with push-ups, and then on like your next superset or however it is that you're doing it, you could do some sort of split squat, whether that be forward lunges, reverse lunges, or split squats for higher reps, and then say on workout B on Wednesday, you can have it where you do, say Bulgarian split squats, a harder split squat variation first, and then your second superset or whatever it is that you plan to do, you can do something like tempo squats. So tempo squats are, they're harder in the sense that you're doing more time under tension, but you're not doing it in the same of like a one and a half squat or pause squats kind of thing. So, so yeah, there's a lot of variation that you can go with that. Uh, generally, you want to find a harder variation, whatever that happens to be, and prioritizing that first, and then doing the more like assistance work, so to speak, then after later. Man, great question. Uh, do we have time to do a couple of stuff? No, no let's go save that for next week. It's right okay. at 30 minutes, so I like 30 right. minutes is a perfect amount of time. Yeah. Uh, but I know a lot of the things that we've already talked about, we'll, we'll expand upon next week. Yeah. Some of the basics you can probably already apply yeah. to your upper body, so things like tempo. Tempo. Um, you know, one and a half works for push ups too. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to get active and engaged with some of this programming now, that's an easy enough thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and remember your knee variations of push ups and then hand place them. Like a little bit more over that next week. So, guys, thanks for watching. Like, thank you as always. We could probably do this for a couple of hours. Um, yeah. <laughs> you guys talking about you stuff guys like stopped this. watching. Yeah, you won't want to watch. Twenty six minutes ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so check uh, out. Check in for next week, guys. Thanks a lot. Right. Good job, Mike.